This is a micro lecture about analyzing the runtime of an algorithm, and we're going to talk about this in terms of the number of steps of a Turing machine. So the question that we're going to address is what does it mean that the Turing machine that we've been talking about the last couple classes for recognizing this language of 1 to the n, 0 to the m, where m is between 2n and 3m, what does it mean that that Turing machine has quadratic runtime? So in short, what it means is that the runtime is the number of steps taken by the algorithm. And to have quadratic runtime, it means that the number of steps is proportional to the square of the number of bits it takes to represent the input. So here we have input that is n1s and between 2n and 3m1s. And so that is going to be linear in n. And so if we take that n and square it, and just ignore all of those multiples like twos and threes and then an additional one from the ones. So it kind of brushing aside any aspect of that that isn't just proportional to n, we have that we have quadratic runtime. So thinking about analyzing this and actually breaking down the algorithm and saying where are all of the steps taken in the algorithm, we can recall that our overall approach was centered around the idea of having two major loops where the first loop handles phase one, which says for every unmarked one on the left, go ahead and mark off two ones on the right. Then phase two is that if you have remaining unmarked zeros, for each of those, go ahead and unmark a one on the right. So the key here is we're going to say that each of these four loops describes a process that is going to be taken multiple times or multiple iterations. So we want to ask ourselves, how many iterations does each loop take? and how many steps for each iteration. So for each unmarked one, we know that there are going to be n ones. So this for loop is going to execute n times. So there will be n iterations. And then the question is, how many steps per iteration? Because we're going to take that number of steps and multiply it by n. So the big picture idea is that we are going to scan right to left to figure out if I have an input like 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. I can mark off a 1, then scan to the right, mark off some zeros, then scan back to the left. So how many of these scanning steps are involved? Well, if we want to really break it down and analyze it more precisely, then we can recognize that there actually are some sub loops involved in the scanning. And these are the things that I've, I, that I've um, highlighted here. We have these small cycles where each of these is just a self loop around a different component. And if we look at more detailed pseudocode, and this is more detailed in a slightly different way than I'd written up before, what these self loops correspond to are nested for loops inside the outer for loop. So if we want to highlight this to be reflective of what we already have on the screen, we have a for each one on the left. This guy is going to correspond to do all of these steps n times. So n iterations. And then what's in the box is telling us how many steps per iteration. And that actually involves some nested for loops. So for each unmarked zero, or for each unmarked one, move to the right. So that's kind of one of the first phases of getting over to the unmarked zero that we need to uh, mark off. But additionally, we might have some marked zeros to move past. The first time we don't have any of those. And then we'll mark two zeros. And then moving left is going to be our third for loop. So we can ask the same question for each of these inner for loops. We're going to ask how many iterations and how many steps per iteration. So the number of unmarked ones is going to be different for each iteration of the outer for loop, but every time it's going to be at most n iterations. We're never going to have more than n unmarked ones. And now if we look inside this for loop, it's finally really simple, and we don't care about n anymore, because the number of steps that are necessary to process for each unmarked one is just a single step. 
we're just going to move right whenever we see an unmarked one. So this is one step per iteration. And so what that means is that the entire portion of the A1 process contributes at most n steps. Now for A2, we have a similar situation. The number of marked zeros is now going to be at most 2n. And it's at most 2n iterations because although we might have up to 3m uh, zeros, at most 2n of them are going to get marked in this first phase. And then again, we just have one step per iteration. So we have at most 2n steps for A2. Then for A3, we can do similar analysis. Now we have kind of two blocks here, though. We have marked zeros, of which there are at most 2n, and unmarked ones, of which there are at most n. So we have at most 3n steps here, because moving left is just a single step per iteration. And then we also have these outer steps that are not involved in any loops themselves, but I have a plus one for marking the one, another plus one for marking the first two, well, let's say plus two for marking both twos, and then another plus one for that final right step where we're setting up for the next iteration. So all in all, we can sum this up and we can see that we have at most six n plus four steps, but we're really just interested in the big picture relationship between the number of steps and n. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say that this value, 6n plus 4, grows linearly with the size of my input. And so linear runtime is written as O of n. So what we have is that our first phase has n iterations, each of which take linear time. So n iterations times linear time per iteration is quadratic runtime. And then the analysis for phase two, we can see at a high level is going to be the same, where I'm saying now I get to the point where I have, let's fast forward here, that one will be marked off as a Z, these two will be marked off as X's. And so in phase two, I'm going to say I have at most N zeros that are left to be marked off. And for each iteration, I'm going to mark a zero, scan to the left, unmark a one, and scan back to the right. So overall, the scanning process, again, is going to be n time, linear time per iteration. And at most n iterations, so phase two is also going to be O of n squared. So if I have two things that take O of n squared, an additional thing that's a single time, then these happen in sequence. So I'm just doubling my runtime. Doubling my runtime doesn't change its overall dependence on the size of my input. So that's how I get quadratic runtime.